Hi everyone, welcome to CMC Conversations. I'm Parishi, a first year at CMC in the class of 26, and today we're here with Michael, who's a class of 24 at CMC. So, welcome Michael. Tell us a bit about yourself. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Michael Godinis. I use he, him pronouns. I'm a junior at CMC, so I'm class of 2024. Uh, I'm from Long Island, New York, but I like to I just say that I'm from New York and let people think that I'm from New York City. Um, on campus, I'm a government major with a concentration in public law and a gender and sexuality studies sequence. Uh, I'm also involved in, I'm the co-president of CMC Advocates for Survivors of Sexual Assault and Domestic Violence. I'm also on the Model United Nations team. Um, I'm the student programmer for the gender and sexuality studies sequence, and I'm formerly a part of ASCMC, our student government. That's awesome. So you're very involved. And it seems that a lot of your involvement on campus and just from a lot of conversations I've had with you, your interests tend to lie within the realm of government, social advocacy, politics. So I just want to ask you first off, what got you into that? Yeah, um, I think that coming to CMC, I was interested in a lot of different majors. I was thinking about econ, I was thinking about math, I was thinking about public policy, philosophy, tons of different majors. Um, and ultimately it just boiled down to both my experience in Gov20, which is the um, Intro to American Politics class that's part of the GE curriculum, as well as um, just conversations that I had with people on campus. So Gov20 I took in my spring of my freshman year, I took it with Professor Moravchik, and I just absolutely loved the class. I loved learning more about the American political system, about how policy works, about how like the political nature and political landscape of our country has evolved over time. And that really introduced politics to me as an academic field in a field of potential further study while I'm here at CMC. Um, I'm also just, I was also really just interested in political conversations that were happening around campus. So my freshman year was the most recent presidential election year. And even though we were online, there were tons of conversations going on about uh, different elections across the country ranging from the presidency to Senate to House to local offices and just about different political issues, social issues, economic political issues um, and all of those conversations just seem to really excite me and I think that they were some of the more intellectually stimulating conversations that I've had and just helped lay a groundwork for me to continue a further study in government. So would you say that at CMC those political conversations tend to happen more often? I'd say so. Um, I think that there's a sort of political ethos to CMC. I think a large part of that, I mean, when I was first interested in coming to CMC, one of the things that was always stressed is the political diversity. The fact that you can pick a group of 10 students and you'll find a mixed range of people on the spectrum from left to right to middle to everywhere that there is. And I really do think that I found that to be the case. And with that, there comes a, there's a big level of respect for other people's political ideals. And hearing people out in their arguments and just having real debate about different political issues that affect us and affect those around us. And I think that that's something that I've really seen pervade throughout CMC, um, be it in classroom discussions, in social discussions, in just broader intellectual discussions that I have with my peers and professors. And I feel like at CMC there's a less of a stigma behind certain beliefs and that results in just like more freedom when mm -hmm. it comes to expressing your opinion. Yeah, definitely. And I think you see that a lot in like the institutions that we have at CMC, like the Athenaeum, you see that a lot, bringing in diverse viewpoints on different topics from, I mean, I've, there have been speeches about comedy to speeches about economic policy to speeches about um, law and everyone just wants to learn and wants to grow and wants to challenge their own beliefs and challenge others' beliefs. And I think that there's some sort of mutual respect there. Yeah, totally. I mean, I would say that just like the ability to have so many spaces where you can express your opinion mm -hmm. and also hear some pushback on it, I think that's really, really important in forming an educated mindset about the world. Totally. So I want to know, being at CMC, you kind of solidified, okay, I'm interested in politics. How have the resources here allowed you to explore that more? Yeah, so at, while, I was, while I've been at CMC, I've been able to actually take that intellectual and personal interest in politics and policy and turn it into work experience um, over my past two summers and my upcoming summer. And CMC has been a large part in being able to make that happen. 
So for my freshman year, I interned at Connecticut Against Gun Violence, which is a statewide in Connecticut um, gun violence prevention, essentially lobbying firm and policy development firm um, who really help set the statewide agenda when it comes to gun violence prevention policy um, and help push the state, which is already one of the leaders in the nation when it comes to gun violence prevention towards an even brighter future. And that internship was set up through me. It was one of the partnered internships with the Magrublian Center for Human Rights, which is one of the research centers on campus. And it was also supported by the Soul Center for Student Opportunity, which without those two institutional supports from CMC, I would not have been exposed to that internship or been able to even do that internship. And even though it was a virtual internship, CMC's support and just the overall partnering with such a great organization made that summer way more fruitful than I thought it was going to be. Um, and then in my second year, I interned on, um, on Capitol Hill in the U.S. House of Representatives as a Victory Congressional Intern. So this was done through the Victory Institute, which is a LGBTQ plus um, political action committee and overall like po political policy firm. And they have something called the Victory Congressional Internship. And this internship takes anywhere from 12 to 14 LGBTQ plus undergraduate students every summer and places them in different congressional offices. And it was really a way that I was able to get my foot in the door in working in the House of Representatives, which I otherwise would have had a much more difficult time doing. I heard about this internship through a Soul Center email list and was able to talk to past CMC students who have done it about their experience applying for and actually doing the internship. And even though this student who I was able to talk to was a senior and I was a sophomore, CMC's strong sense of community made it so that I felt comfortable going to them and asking them about their experience and just getting general advice about the application process and about their time as a Victory Congressional intern in general. That's really interesting. So what was your experience like being on Capitol Hill for that summer? It was amazing. Um, yeah. it, it, was, it was really wild because it was definitely a very politically charged summer. Um, every week I felt like there was a new topic that was being discussed in the office and around the Hill and amongst interns and amongst staffers. And it was just really great to be able to be in the room and hear those conversations. And the office that I was placed in was amazing. Um, they let me both do like traditional intern duties, like helping with constituent correspondence and taking care of like ad hoc daily tasks, as well as actually help with some of the more legislative tasks. So I got to propose different legislative proposals to the congressman for him to sign on to or co-sponsor and got to help write, um, write letters to different cabinet officials and uh, members of congressional leadership. And it was just a really, really great way to take what I've been learning in classes about the political process, about the American political system, and actually experience it and gain more tangible skills. So you're really able to dive in. So you hear about all this stuff on the news, like, oh, this bill was passed, this bill is um, being discussed right now in this committee, but you got to actually see it happen. And yeah. I think that must have been a really crazy experience that yeah. probably reframed the way that you look at politics. Definitely. I think it really, being on the Hill really showed me what, like, the importance of bipartisanship and how so much of the stuff that was accomplished while I was there was done in a bipartisan manner um, and how consensus is even possible in such a politically polarized uh, world. Mm -hmm. So how did kind of observing bipartisanship happen shift the way that you look at politics and your own political beliefs? Yeah, I think that, I think that honestly working on the Hill, at least for me, showed me that politics doesn't play as large of a role in policy as I thought it did. I thought that so much of it was politically charged in thinking about elections and thinking about campaigns and thinking about um, how will this look for the Congress people. But in the end, even though that certainly is in the back of their minds, every Congress person that seemed to be working on a bill that my office was working on had in the forefront of their minds their constituents and actually working for policy that would help the people that they represent, whether or not they represent people who politically align with them or not. Um, and just the fact that so many people on the Hill really stress the importance of having bipartisan bills be, be pushed forth really show me that people aren't trying to just have like 
one party win out over the other, but actually try to work together um, to enact real policy that can affect people's lives. I mean, we don't hear about bipartisanship enough because you don't think about constituencies when you're looking at how big and vast these political divides have gotten. And we often forget that these representatives are actually representing this group of people that could be 40% right-leaning, 40% left-leaning, 20% independent. Mm -hmm. And you realize that we're really dealing with people here. We're not dealing with these factions. Mm -hmm. And you kind of have to start to think about people as individuals. And I think that that's a really interesting perspective that I assume you got to really get a good look through. Yeah. Um, so tell me about your upcoming summer because that sounds really interesting. Yeah, um, so for my third summer, I'm going to be continuing a or continuing an action plan for a scholarship that I recently got. Um, the Obama Foundation, in partnership with Airbnb CEO Brian Chesky, set up a new scholarship called the Voyager Scholarship for Public Service. And basically, this scholarship sought out um, undergraduate juniors with an interest in public service and demonstrated leadership in public service to carry on what's called a summer voyage, where basically with institutional support from the Obama Foundation and from Airbnb, um, we're able to take some public service path for our summer that we otherwise wouldn't be able to do. And these paths are across all different public service issue areas. I have friends who are looking into healthcare, I have friends who are looking into um, criminal justice reform, I have friends who are looking into substance abuse disorder, um, and it's really allowing us the chance to dive into a public service interest that we have in a way that otherwise a traditional internship wouldn't let us. Um, so for me, that public service interest is in supporting survivors of sexual violence, so be that sexual assault, domestic violence, and that's something, that's a passion of mine that I really cultivated at CMC um, while being co-president of CMC Advocates. And this summer, what I'm going to basically do is go to New Orleans, uh, which is a state with restrictive reproductive rights, and spend 40 hours a week working in a survivor support center, working in the DV shelter at the, the center, and basically seeing how different political landscapes affect the ways that survivors experience trauma. And both augmenting my support skills that I already have and also helping to develop more support skills to ultimately set me up for a career where I can help survivors in a more institutional way. And what would that career look like? Um, up in the air, but mm -hmm. definitely, definitely hoping that law will play a role in it. Um, the classes at CMC that I've taken that I've been most passionate about and have really piqued my interest are those related to law. And law school is definitely um, what I consider to be the next step for me in, in my, my path towards public service. So whether that means working for civil justice for survivors or working to help amend policies like Title IX policies, like the VAWA Act, um, to help shape the institutions that survivors go through when they're experiencing trauma, um, I hope that a career in the law is the means in which I'll be able to do that. I feel like being able to look at um, justice for survivors first on the ground and then intending to th apply that to your career, you're going to get like a really good look at it from the bottom level before thinking about it more institutionally. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and this is, I mean, much like my first two summers, this being able to partake and get this scholarship would not have been possible without CMC. Um, it was first forwarded to me by a professor, by one of my history professors, Professor Selig, without her forwarding it to me, I wouldn't have known about it. I wouldn't have even considered applying for it. Um, and both like the fact that professors are so close to their students here, which is I think is a large part of what a small liberal arts college provides you, um, as well as just the fact that they take such an interest in their students' lives, really both not only made me aware of the scholarship, but gave me the courage and confidence to actually apply for it. And then also just working with Brian Davidson, who's our fellowships coordinator at CMC, to really help refine my application, not only to make it as appealing to the people reviewing it as possible, but also to make me think, like, why do I want to do this? What do I want from this? What do I want from my career? Why is this helpful in, in helping achieve that? Being able to work with him and really refine my goals and my application made it so that I'm going into the summer with a clear sense of what I hope it will lead me to. Um, so without 
the help of those faculty and staff members, I would not have been able to, to even consider doing the summer. Yeah, and that's really unique about CMC. Like, you can schedule an appointment with a professor and just have a conversation yep. for an hour about some maybe loosely related topic to their subject, but it's more about getting to know these people that have such like a, a specific interest and specific focus um, who are experts in their field mm -hmm. and just being able to have that time with them. I mean, I'm in a classroom with only six students and wow. I think that's something that CMC really gives you that some other colleges may not be able to. Definitely, yeah. yeah. So you've done two of these summers and you have this one coming up, but I'm sure that Michael from two years ago would have been very surprised. Like, wow, I got to meet Obama and I get to do this <laughs> incredible initiative in New Orleans. Um, that's really catered to work that's really catered towards like your future career interests so i mean how have you changed and what have you kind of learned throughout this whole process yeah i think if if we're sticking along with the strain of like thinking about it in terms of a government student interested in politics um politically i've changed a lot in the sense that i've found my niche like i found a policy niche that i really care about because i've noticed how it really affects people's lives and that that's like with survivor support um and that's in, like more emblematic of a broader thing that i think i've learned while at cmc is that policy isn't just an academic study it's not just theoretical it actually affects people's lives and that's something that i've seen through a combination of my classes of these summer experiences of conversations that i've had with professors and classmates that policy really matters for people and that people ultimately drive policy. And I think that going into my time at CMC, I always thought of politics as the banter that you see on the news and as the back and forth between parties, but not actually about the change that is possible and the change that can actually happen for people's lives. And being at CMC and being able to talk to people who have X, Y, and Z perspective on the same issue has really helped me develop a more comprehensive approach to how I think about different political issues, ranging from the environment to gun violence to education reform to criminal justice reform. All of my ideas about these politics that I thought were so set in stone going into my time at CMC have changed and continue to change and will continue to change until I leave and hopefully beyond that. And I think that CMC just really fosters like an intellectual environment where that kind of change is encouraged where you're encouraged to challenge yourself and to challenge others and to continue growing in your and others beliefs to ultimately reach a more comprehensive viewpoint on um, on different political issues and i think the environment at cmc gives a really good counter to our current age of echo chambers and polarization where if you have an opinion that you believe strongly in you're gonna find so many sources that keep on reinforcing mm -hmm. it online. And it's really easy to just like close yourself in a box and think that, oh, what I think is completely right. And at CMC, you are forced to rethink mm -hmm. every single day. And I think that exercise, that mental exercise of changing what we think really keeps us more sharp and yeah. it really keeps us closer to the truth. Because I think everyone has a piece of the truth and once we really start to talk to each other about those different pieces, we can work together to come closer together mm -hmm. to, an, a, to a point of understanding. And I found that being at a school like CMC allows us to get there and do something with it. Yeah, and I can think of one specific instance where that's happened for me at CMC. Um, in my class last semester, Study of Law, mm -hmm. our professor assigned uh, book by Justice Scalia and a book by Justice Breyer, both on constitutional law, assigned them in the same week, and we were told to read one after the other. Getting two completely different takes on constitutional law and having to read one and be like, yeah, I completely agree with that, but then read a completely different view and be like, yeah, I completely agree with that, <laughs> and see how those two views don't necessarily have to contradict each other, but can actually intersect with each other, and how there is no black and white, but there's room for gray. And how when you're being exposed to all of those different viewpoints and all those different ideas, you can just develop more nuanced opinions and more nuanced thoughts and ultimately just lead to, to a better intellectual 
intellectual conversation. And I feel like power without that nuance can be destructive. And I think if you go to CMC, you're probably going to end up having some power over some field. And I think having the knowledge that you're not right is a really useful tool mm -hmm. going into the future. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for shedding a light on politics at CMC and telling us about your really interesting experience um, over the past few years. Um, and it, it was great having you on CMC Conversations. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Thank you.